this morning. Well, Sam, you may give God an applause. And he's a brother. Is that what you mean? Say it with this morning. The Lord is really, really, really good. And his mercy endures forever. Say this to me. Say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Marla, lead us this morning in prayer to give this service to the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this season that we've, we've been in and we're coming out of, God, of thankfulness and just realizing who's important, God. We thank you for the life that you, you gave for us. We thank you for everything that you give every single day so that we can have the life here on earth with you. Lord, we ask that you just watch over the service today. You guide it. You lead it. You direct it. And God, I ask that you speak, you speak to each and every one of us today and help us to have a great day in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, the Lord has given me the breath of life. He put spirit in my flesh. And so with this breath, I will praise him today. Let everything that has breath praise you.
Hallelujah. I just got to say something to you. Sometimes we come into worship and it's, it's almost like, God, I need something to move me. I need something to stir me. I need something to, to get me going spiritually. And that's why David said to himself, he said, he said, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I mean, y'all know it's a sacrifice to come in on an early morning and to begin to worship the Lord. But how many of y'all know that's what we should do as a people of God this morning? I'm going to challenge you to wake up your, your praise, wake up your worship this morning. Because I don't know about you, but I want to be moved from one place to another this morning. Is anybody with me? I don't want to be in the same place I was when I walked in. Not that it was real bad when I came in here this morning, but, but I just, I've come to church for a reason this morning. To be in the presence of God. And anytime I'm in the presence of Almighty God, I'm talking about that, that, that manifested presence, the glory of God. He's with us all the time. I'm talking about that manifested presence. I mean, y'all come to be in the manifested presence of God. God says that. There's no way I'm walking out of here the same as I was when I walked in. Can somebody say amen? amen. But I've got to determine something. I'm going to awaken my worship. I'm going to awaken my praise. And as I stand, as I sit before the Lord this morning, I'm glad to hear the Lord moving from that place to another place. Amen. I mean, I'm going to be in that place with God this morning. Hallelujah. Lift it up to him. You sing this last song this morning. Move me, Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody say, move me, Lord. Move me, Lord.
every Sunday, every night, going on in and around my life. And I know this, your way is the only way that I want to go. Amen. We say it with all of our this morning, Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Lord, let praise go out of my mouth to you. Lord, let jubilation come out of my mouth to you. Let my heart just convey to you, Lord God, and how great and mighty you are. It doesn't matter what's going on in the natural, because eternally you are God. You set up on the throne. Nothing changes that. And my joy is secure. My peace is secure. So don't the stopping the things and the circumstances of the world. It is in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him glory this morning. is my strength has nothing to do with feelings or happiness. It is the strength of my life because it's eternal goods inside of me that come from the Lord no matter what's going on around me. I will be joyful. I will rejoice and bless His holy name. Hallelujah. Say this to me. I will revisit joy again. So therefore, I rejoice in Him today. I visit joy. I choose it. It's mine. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm trying to convince you something this morning. Y'all get it this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's come to Jesus. And let's sing this before you sing this morning. Well, this joy that I have, well, the world didn't give to me. Oh, this joy that I have, oh, the world didn't give to me. Oh, this trust 
and obey and continue to be faithful to him. So thank you for being faithful to the Lord. May God richly bless you. Amen. I want to pray for those that, that uh, are not with us this morning. We've got uh, uh, Roy's on the road <coughs> and Linda are on the road. Uh, several traveling. Uh, we'll be traveling even more after today. Let's pray for God's cover and protection on them. We've got still several families dealing with sicknesses. And let's lift them up. Let's remember the Schaefers. And let's remember Jack Pettigo. Uh, let's remember uh, 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 several different ones that are going through. So thank you, Sister Mary. And then Sandy Glotter and the Glotter family, they're out uh, helping with their mom today. So we, uh, we extend our, our prayers to the Glotter family this morning. Uh, let's also pray for Betty and Kelly uh, for healing this morning. And uh, uh, different ones are just going through a bunch of stuff. Everybody say, we're healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. And there's no sickness, disease, there's no cold, and there's no pandemic that can take us down in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we're the people of God. He, if Jesus resides within me, how many of y'all would say, I'm saved and Jesus resides within me? I ask you to be perfect. I ask you, are you saved and Jesus resides in you? If Jesus is in you, that means healing is in you. Amen. So you're like, God, write it down. He said, he's, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask for them according to the power that works within us. Amen. Amen. I think God's going to heal you from the inside out in the name of Jesus and just begin to receive it by faith in the name of Jesus. Jesus has already done the work. Amen. Say that with me. Say, healing is already purchased today in Jesus' name for all those that need. So we're going to pray for all those that are going through sickness, disease, of any kind, attack, or this virus or whatever. In the name of Jesus, let's just agree right now in prayer for them. And won't you stand to your feet with me? We're going to agree for uh, other needs this morning and, and believe that God's going to touch in mighty, mighty ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that you're aware of everything we have need of. You even said that. You said, I, I know what you have need of before you ask. But you said, ask that your joy may be full. Father, we thank you, Lord. You said, let your requests be made known unto God with thanksgiving, with praise. And then you said, Lord, the peace of God, your peace that, that passes all understanding, goes beyond what we even understand, will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, Father, I know standing before me today, anybody that's listening today, there are many needs represented in, in a lot of families. Father God, we just ask you right now that God, your Holy Spirit, oh, there's no distance in the Spirit, but we pray that right now, that the Spirit of God will be released to hover, to move, to work your work, Holy Ghost, in every life and every situation, God, this morning. And Lord, we pray for those that have been hit with sickness and disease. We rebuke those things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you, you purchased for us on Calvary our salvation and our healing. So we rebuke sickness and disease off of your people. All for those that need that even touch this morning. And I thank you, Father God, for healing virtue flowing right now. We receive by faith in Jesus' name. Now, if you need a physical touch, if you're listening online, you need touch, just say that by faith. Say, I'll receive my healing right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the strength of God that is going forth right now. We thank you that things are being turned around. Things are being shifted right now by the Spirit of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, Lord, I, in Jesus' name, there, there, there I feel the promise of the Lord. There may be somebody watching online right now, and you're dealing with the threat or the condition of throat cancer. I want you to just put your, your hand upon your neck right now by the Spirit of God. Right now, Father, I speak to that issue. I speak to that attack upon that body. And in the name of Jesus, we just command every attack of the enemy to lose its grip in Jesus' name. We pray for healing and wholeness, God, in that area that, that cancer or whatever condition upon that throat be taken away now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. If that's you, just receive that right now. I say, I receive that in Jesus' name. We thank you for the touch of the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you that you're moving on these that have physical needs. And you're bringing healing, God. You brought healing and we receive it. Father, we ask God for other needs today. We pray that you save the lost members of our family, those struggling with weaknesses. We pray that you lift them up and bring them out in Jesus' name to the glory of God. 
We pray that you direct those that need your direction this morning and protect those that need protection. We pray for the covering of the Lord be upon every issue of our families, our hearts, our lives. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the thanks for it as we commit it all to you. And we just thank you, Lord, for the results. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody that agrees says amen. And I agree. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Good day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes just feel like we just need to confess sometimes. Amen. Just say this, say, there is no better life than I can live but a life sold out to the Lord Jesus Christ. 100%. Amen. 100%. You know, I've shared this example many, many times over the history of our church, but it, it, it bears repeating again. You've heard that term. Just be sold out for God. And I ask God, what does, what does that mean? Be sold out. And he, this is what the Lord showed me. He said, it's like the devil going, going in the shop of, of, of the shop of your life. And he's shopping for something that he wants to get a hold of in your life. But he goes to the shelf he wants to attack, and there's nothing there. Why? Because it's been sold out. Hallelujah. God has it in his possession, and there's nothing left for the enemy to take. Hallelujah. So how many are going to be sold out for the Lord? Give every part to God. Every part to God. With a devil, he can shop all he wants. He's not going to find a place in me. That's what the Bible says. Give no place to the devil. Amen. Amen. I mean, oh, God's got the answers. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, somebody say, glory to God. Glory to God. Aren't you glad that God's a God that hears and answers prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be saved. Lord, did I forget anything? I need to pray. I just wanted to ask you to be sure. Okay, hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Praise God. Well, uh, we're going to give you a chance to give this morning. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving to the Lord in 2020. Amen. Thank you uh, for, for just uh, uh, just being convinced that God's word is true. Amen. How many of y'all know his word is true? Amen. How many of y'all have just lift your hand to the Lord in the testimony and say, Pastor, church, everybody that's here, and God himself, I just want to say with an uplifted hand, in spite of 2020 and the devil's attack, I have been blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God for that. Hallelujah. Somebody give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much for your continued giving to the Lord. Amen. Well, take whatever represents your giving in your hand. and We're going to speak a blessing over it, pray over it, and give it this morning. And so uh, we just thank you for what you intended to do. And be obedient whatever God speaks to. Say this with me. Say, Lord, I thank you for the provision in my and my family's life. You have given it to me. It is your source. I have the source of income in my life because of you. So, Lord, I take this portion of what you've blessed me with, and I plant it today in the house of God, believing and knowing what your word says, that as I plant seed into your house and into your kingdom, it will bring forth a mighty harvest in this house the kingdom, and my house. Thank you, Lord, for your continual blessing. Thank you, Lord. You're going to water this seed. You're going to shine on it with the sun. And I thank you, Lord, for the result it brings. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. With that promise, I think we can give cheerfully. Amen. Come on and give to the Lord as he blesses you to do so this morning. Hallelujah. Glory.
kids go to Holy Ghost Town this morning. How many of y'all are glad for our kids? Amen. I would appreciate all our children's workers that are faithful. With uh, some, We never know what we're going to get kid by, especially this year. We don't know, sometimes it's one or two, and sometimes, man, a, a, a pastor of them will stand up. Y'all know what pastor means, right? I'm still preaching in Texas, right? Y'all know what, what a pastor means, amen. But uh, hey, we want to let you know about a few things that we're going to do. Uh, 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 first of all, I want to just tell you that, that uh, uh, I'm thankful that some have expressed a desire to to just officially uh, make themselves partners. Uh, right now, you know, uh, right now. Oh, Jesus, God, I well, lost step back in time there. Amen. Some, some things are hard to break. Some horses are hard to break. Amen. But let me tell you, Rock Creek Church. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And uh, we're thankful for that. And uh, how many of y'all know that, uh, hey, if we're saved, we're in the kingdom, we're in the household of God, but, but how many of y'all know it's important to be planted? And it's important to make a statement that this is where God has put me. This is where I belong. I'm committed here. Amen. Commitment's important. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why, man, if you, I don't care how long, I don't care how long you live together, it's not a marriage until you made a commitment to one another. Would somebody say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Commitment is important. Commit your way into the Lord. So I'm thrilled about these. And, and uh, if you're interested, maybe you've been coming for a short time or a long time, and you feel like God has called you to be a part of this house, uh, you know, uh, uh, let us know. Uh, we don't go through a big formality. It's just a form you fill out saying expressing your heart. And, hey, I want to consider myself a part of this church. And our only requirement is that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't, come and we'll make sure that you do. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, get to know Jesus. And we want you to be a part of what God is doing here. We're believing for an exciting 2021. So if you'd like to be a part of that, we're going to welcome new partners next Sunday. Amen. And uh, so if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, please see Pastor Donna. She'll get a partnership form to you and uh, bring it back to us next week. We'll be glad to welcome you all in with these others that express that desire. So. We're thankful for that. Amen. Also, a couple of things I just want to let you know uh, going, going forward. This next uh, uh, Wednesday will be our last service of 2020. We won't have an online service uh, because it's going to be nothing but prayer. How many of y'all believe we need to end this crazy year with prayer? Amen. 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 We're going to come together at 630, and our plan is to pray for an hour. We may go a little longer. I don't know. We're just going to be led by the Spirit of God, but I believe that uh, there'll be nothing more more proper than to end this year together by praying in the house of God. Amen? So hey, all that can, come and join us on this Wednesday, this last service we have in this year, and let's end it with prayer and uh, thanksgiving to the Lord at 6.30 on Wednesday. Uh, also, uh, don't miss next Sunday's service. You know, our first uh, Sunday of, of the new year, and I believe God will be setting the course for some things, and and uh, doing, I'll be sharing some things very important that we'll be doing in, in January. And so uh, don't miss uh, next next uh, week. It's going to be an important uh, Sunday. So uh, I just want to again say thank you for your faithfulness uh, in this year. Amen. And for staying faithful. And even you that, that uh, have not made it back because of sickness or threat of sickness and, and just playing it safe, some of our elderly or whatever. I want us to, for you that are watching online and in that position, but has continued to stay faithful in watching and viewing and, and even in your tithes and offerings. We want to say thank you so much for that. Staying connected and being remaining a part of the family of God. That's when you know it's not just about uh, what I can get, but, but it's about uh, what God has put in my heart and what is right in the Word to do. So I just want to express my thanks again and, and our thanks as pastors and uh, for you and for your faithfulness to the Lord in this year. Amen. How many of y'all believe we're going to break out this next year in the name of Jesus? Amen. Amen. And you know what? Regardless of what happens in the natural, I believe the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to shine greater than ever before. Would y'all say amen if you agree with that? Amen. So exciting year to come. And, and don't, don't miss these last two services and then our first service of the year next Sunday. Amen. Or we'll release our kids to go to Holy Ghost Town. Ages uh, uh, 3 to 12, amen. And y'all go have a great time. Give our kids a big hand. Amen. So God bless you a little bit. In the name of Jesus. Well, I want to get the most beautiful wife in the, in the face of the earth to come and bless you. I want to tell you, just said, you know what? The devil's so stupid. He really is. You know, he tries to ruin everything. He tries to ruin the holiday. I want to tell you, we had one.
one of the most fulfilling holiday seasons that we have ever had in our life. Thank you, Lord. And almost every one of our family, almost every one of our kids and grandkids on Thanksgiving and Christmas, it was just a precious time. Fellowship and, and the communication throughout. So I just, uh, you know, uh, uh, I just thank God. I just recognize the Lord and thank Him for His blessing. We're blessed people. And I just thank God for so, so, Pastor Bonnie, come on and share whatever God's given you this morning. Give her a hand this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm just so thankful, like you said, I'm so thankful for, for the Lord and for family. Yes. I'm thankful for family. You know, we're, we are a part of the family of God. We are the family of God. Yeah. Us sitting here, and you know, I know God is thankful for us, but I'm so thankful for the Lord. I'm thankful for Jesus that died upon the cross for my salvation, for my forgiveness, for peace. How many out there loves peace? Yeah. Peace is so important. Peace is the way we live a, a fulfilled life. You know? And I just love the Lord and I thank Him. I thank Him for His peace. I thank Him for our family. I thank Him, I thank him for my husband. He, he's so sweet. And <laughs> I think he's bugging me up in the words. <laughs> but, you know, I am thankful for a godly husband. I'm thankful for a man of God that, that I've been able to share 35 plus years with now. And, and you know, he's, he, he's, he's, I know he's a wonderful pastor, but he's, he's an awesome husband. He's, he's such a blessing to my life. And you know, I was, I was just thinking this morning about what I want to get up here and say. And as we end out this old year, and we're going to begin a new year start next Sunday. I just want more than anything in the world to draw closer to God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We draw closer as we draw closer yeah. we'll grow yeah. and as we grow then we can help others even more and you know what are we here for we, I believe we're here for two things and that's to love God and to draw men to God yeah. and the closer we draw to God the more of a light we can be yeah. to help others yeah. Yeah. and I just want to read uh, James 4 and 8 it says draw nigh to God and he will yeah. not be mine but he will draw my to you. Yeah. God bless y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Rich words. Hallelujah. My wife moves me this morning. Hallelujah. She moves me all the time. Amen. I just look at her and she moves me. Amen. She's prettier now than we got married. Amen. I'm telling she gets prettier every day. Amen. I'm sure she thinks the same to me. I don't know. But I'm blessed. Isn't it true what she said? Amen. We just get closer to God. Man, God's going to use us. Amen. God's going to shout. We'll see people come to the Lord who never thought possible. Amen. God's good. Somebody say God's good. God's good. We all ready to go to the Word this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Get your Bibles. Jacob, would you and uh, Brother Wes roll that board over here for me? Put it right here. And I'm going to use that board this morning for something. And uh, I'm excited about what God's given me to share with y'all this morning. And so open your Bibles, if you will, to Psalm chapter 30. Psalm chapter 30. Right in between Psalm 29 and Psalm 30. <laughs> help you out there. <laughs> Some of y'all college students like Sarah, you need a little help in navigating. When you don't have a computer, but I just can't. Oh. <laughs> I just picked it up and said, I'll serve as far as you will. She just happened to be in the line of sight. So I had to pick her up. Out of Psalm chapter 30. Are y'all there? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Stand with me, if you will. Hallelujah. How many of y'all love the Word of God? Yeah. Amen. Say this to me. Say, the Word, the word, word. is good, good. good for my life. You know what? Are y'all strong this morning? Can y'all go through it? So the light will be in it. We may stand in this. Hallelujah. Lord of God. Y'all sure y'all can lift it up? God bless you. You need somebody else? Come back. Come back. 
Astuce, astuce. Il y en a deux. Il y en a cinq. Go! They can do all things through the crowd. That's perfect, guys. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, how are y'all? Are y'all there? Psalm 30. I'm not. Let me get there. Let's read this great psalm of David right now. It says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. Thank you, brothers. And hast not made my enemies to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Glory. Sing unto the Lord, O ye his saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise him? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, Lord. Be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Hallelujah. Lord. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Hallelujah. Lord. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. Everybody said, I will not be silent. Lord. Oh, Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that some great words in that yeah. song? How many of y'all have ever had days of mourning? Yeah. I want to tell you, if you continue to trust in the Lord, cry unto Him, seek His face, He will turn your mourning into dancing. Amen? He will cause the, the darkness to be light about you. He will bring you out if you will continue in Him. Everybody say, continue in Him. Hallelujah. I want to just uh, share a a, a, a message with you today called three three letter words. Look at somebody and say, he's talking about three three letter words. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we know your word is true and it is profitable for our life. I thank you, Lord, for speaking this in my spirit to share with your people this morning. So I trust you that we need to hear this. God, I thank you as I apply it to my life, and I pray that, God, we would all catch the vision and the heart of what you're saying through this, and let us realize, Father God, that, Lord, there is a path to the place that you want us to be in every situation. So, Lord, we give you glory today. We give you praise, and we acknowledge you, Lord, that nothing, no circumstance, no situation is too great to overtake us when we have you. You said that, Lord God, you, you said, God, you're faithful that you will not allow us to be tempted above that which we're able. But with every temptation, you make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. So I thank you, Lord, there's nothing that we can't bear because when we bear something, we turn it out with you. And God, we thank you that you bear our sickness, our disease, our sorrows, the suffering of sin. You bore it all, Lord, so we wouldn't have to. And we, we take your yoke upon you. Said, you said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. So, Lord, I thank you that, Lord, let us make that exchange once again today. Lord, as we give unto you those things, we thank you that, Lord, the weight of glory is what will be put upon us this morning. We thank you for it. We pray your blessings. Let, Lord, let us hear the voice behind the words. We give you praise for what you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we say it all. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Three, three-letter words. Amen. I love watching uh, uh, some different ministries uh, this week and have to run across a podcast of uh, Matthew Hayes. And, and uh, I love, uh, love the way he started his message. And, and uh, so uh, I just want to say this to you this morning as, as I heard him say, uh, how many of y'all know that uh, uh, there's a lot of different, uh, even, in, even in a church setting, there may be different views sitting out here. 
we view things differently. Amen? And uh, that's why none of us are alike. Nobody, nobody looks like Wade here. Amen? You know why? Because God needed one Wade in the world. Amen? Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. No, I just, uh, and I'm picking up with these today for some reason. But uh, 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 nobody's like you. You're, you're unique because you have a plan of God that only you can do like you can do. Amen? And so we all have different, but there, there, so there may be some things that each one of us may not quite agree on. As a bulk and as a church family, yes, we agree on the Word of God and, and how can two walk together unless they agree. You know, I used to say that statement, let's just agree to disagree. I really don't like that statement now. Amen? Because how can two walk together unless they agree? Amen? And so, you know, it's like when we have a decision to make in our household, if me and Donna don't agree on something, we don't just stop there. We work it out till we're in agreement of what to do together. Amen? And that's what God expects us to do, walking together as a family. Amen? Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, there's one thing that we all can agree on this morning. And that there's, with this world, there's something wrong. Amen? <laughs> Amen? And we all would agree with that. Yes. There's something wrong with this world. Yes. I want to tell you, why there's something wrong with this world. And it's the first three letter word. Uh, yes. Amen. Yes. Can y'all see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sin. Sin is the root cause of every problem that's going on in the world. Amen. Amen. Now, if it's us sinning, by far, we know that that's what brings problems in our life. Because the Bible is very clear on that. The wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But let me tell you what. We may be going through some things in our life because of somebody else's sin. Amen? Amen. We're going to read the story about David in a little bit. He didn't do anything wrong. He was trying to help somebody else. But man, he got in the greatest distress situation he had ever been in his life. Trying to help somebody else. Why? Because somebody else operated in sin. Yeah. Sin is the result of every problem we have. Yeah. Wrong mindset, wrong government, wrong leadership. Yeah. It's all based on sinly desires, fleshly desires. All the problems start with sin. And whether it's you doing it or somebody else, the troubles that you face in life all are a result of what? Sin. Amen? Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. Jesus came and gave himself a sacrifice for sin. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. So for those of us who have accepted that, Sin is not an issue with us anymore. Yes, we have to deal with the results of the others that are sinning in the world. And if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. We don't make a practice of it. Amen? Let me say that again. We don't make a practice of it. We don't try to gather God in with our little sin room over here and let it all abide together as a happy home. we got to let God show us that we got to let God in every room of our house. Amen? Amen. Let him see all of our dirty laundry. So that he can clean. He's got detergent like you never thought possible. He can wash any stain. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, it's better than oxycodone. It, it can do anything. Amen. He can make a. He can take a black heart and wash it white with red blood. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, Jesus came, and for you that are believers, let me tell you, we may have to deal with issues in the world because of the root of sin. Amen. But I want to tell you, you're not victimized by it. You're not bound by it because you've been made free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sin. The result of sin is every problem that we face in the world. David, through this song that we read, describes three phases of life. Go, go over there to that, that verse uh, uh, 3 there. It says, Oh, Lord. O oh Lord, Thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. How many of y'all know the grave and the pit is where the enemy wants to take you because it is the true result of sin? Amen. But God in His mercy has given us a way out of sin. Amen? Amen. But David describes in this song 
three different places that we go through. Sin, and then there's a cry. He said, I cry unto the Lord. Amen? I cry unto the Lord. But then if you look over there, he said, I cry unto the Lord in several different places. He said there in verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Look over there in verse 8. He said, I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. Hallelujah. And then lastly, in verses 11 and 12, it says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. Sin, a cry, and then there's joy. Amen. Now this is what I want to tell you this morning. How you handle what's in the middle of this sandwich will determine what you deal with in your life. I ask you this morning, who are you crying to? Who are you crying to? This world and this situation this year has given us many reasons to be in distress. We have shed tears. We've cried out, why, why, why? We've cried out, I don't understand. We've cried out all kinds of things. But, but did we stay there? Have we stayed there and cried and complaining? Or have we turned it into a cry to the Lord? Yes. Amen? Yes. I want to tell you, if we can learn to turn our cry toward heaven, if we can turn our cry to the Lord, then God will not lead us in the results of sin, but he will bring us into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of y'all want to rise back in that last place Hallelujah. this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want you to turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I want to read to you the story that David went through. And in my, my recollection of David's life, you know, other than his repentance after his failure with Bathsheba and, and confronted by the prophet, he repented. And other than, than that, this is, this is probably the greatest distress I ever saw in Scripture in David's life. Starting with uh, 1 Samuel in chapter 29, verse 11, the last, the last verse of uh, uh, chapter 29, it describes a time, when this is a time when Saul was still king. David had, a, a, he was really had departed because Saul was after him to kill him. And, but David had gathered all these these uh, 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 misfits, all the misfits, all the guys that, that uh, nobody gave hope to, all the guys that were worthless, they had come to him and their wives and their children and, and what God had given David, a mighty host, an army that was with David, 600 men strong that uh, were devoted to David and they were devoted to David's God. God sent him that as reinforcements in their life. And they were living in a town called Ziklag. And there was a cry to, from a neighbor that said, said, come and help us because we're going to be attacked by the enemy. And we have been a friend to you, so will you come help us? So David and his men rose up early in the morning and all it took all the 600 men. All the men departed. And read with him in verse 11 of chapter 29 of 1 Samuel. It says, so David and his men rose up early and departed in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. And while they were gone, everybody say, and while they were gone. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to, come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire. In other words, after three days of helping a neighboring nation, town, city, he came back to, to his wife and kids in Ziklag where they lived, and it had been burned. And had taken the women captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. They came back to find their hometown burned and all their families kidnapped. How many of y'all have ever faced distress like that? 
I dare to say none of us have. So David and his men, verse 3, came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. Everybody said they cried. Until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever felt like you've been there? And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Have you ever been in a place where you've got to make a choice? Things have not changed yet. Circumstances are full of stress. And you're in a distressed situation. You've got a cry in your heart. Your spirit is broken. And you can't, every time you turn around, you're, you're crying inside, if not outside, maybe both. But David came to a place. Why? Because David had known that God can perform the miraculous. David knew the faithfulness of God. And so David stopped and he encouraged himself. How did he do that? I believe David knew the word. We speak it, uh, we, we read in the word where, where he defeated Goliath after sitting in the field with his father's sheep and singing songs of, of melody and scriptures that we quote, quote the scriptures today. David knew the word. He encouraged himself with the word and with what? With calling out to God. He changed the direction of his cry. Say that with me. Say, David changed the direction of his cry. Now look, David had done nothing wrong. The Malachites, the invaders, the, the sin-driven army had come. It was sin mind mentality that, that see, these nations back then, there, there, there were really, every, every town was almost their own nation. And what they would do, these evil nations that did not know God, they would just build up and build up their armies until they were strong enough to go invade another town or, or nation so that they could steal all their goods to make themselves more, and that's how they lived. That's sin. How I many y'all know that's sin? Amen? David and his men were dealing with the sin of somebody else, but they were still living in the results of sin as long as they stayed in the spirit of stress and depression and crying, looking upon the problem itself. But David changed his cry and his direction of his cry. He encouraged himself. And David said unto Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. In other words, uh, David saying, I'm going to prayer right now. I'm taking, I'm, I'm putting on the, the, the priestly garment. I'm, I'm putting on everything. I'm putting off this old mindset. I'm putting me on a new mindset. I know that even the men that love me and follow me are wanting to kill me right now. No. Can you imagine everybody in the world, you've lost everything, and everybody that was your friends is against you. But he said, what am I going to do? I'm going to encourage myself by the word, and I'm going to go to God in prayer. Hallelujah. I mean, I know you can't lose by doing that. Amen. And Abathar brought thither the he fought to David, and David inquired at the Lord. Oh, I like that. Everybody say, David inquired at the Lord. And I don't believe the Bible doesn't use the word cry here, but I don't believe it's like, Oh, God, most high, everlasting. You see my dilemma here. People are wanting to kill me. My wife, my, my home's burning. I mean, y'all know it was not that kind of prayer. Yeah. There was emotions tied to it. There was heart cry tied to it. Oh, God in heaven, I've seen you work before, and I choose, I choose to, to trust you in spite of what I see. So, God, help me, Noah. I, I, I love what it says. It says, and David inquired at not on, at, he, he pushed through till he was at, till he was in the presence of God. Amen. How many times do we stop short? We just get to the door and try to bring the prayer through so God will hear us. And maybe we can just hear a little bit of instruction. But David said, no, no, I've got to be at the Lord. I will push through into his presence. Make your cry known to the Lord by seeking his face. Not just his address. He cried. He inquired at the Lord. 
saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. I mean, y'all know, when we seek the Lord, when we cry out to the Lord with a pure heart, with an open heart, he answers us. And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake and without fail recover all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So David went, and his 600 men that were with him. Now, this is, this is interesting to me. Just a few scriptures before, they're all going to stone him and kill him. Something happened to David when he secluded himself with God. When he got along with God, and when he came out of that prayer closet after communicating with God, the glory of God was upon him. I'm telling you that you face situations fearlessly. I don't care who's after you or who's threatening you. You face situations differently when you get along with God and you hear the voice of God through his word speaking to you. Because when David came out there, I see nothing in the scripture that any one of these 600 men hesitated to follow him. They saw the anointing on David, and all of a sudden, hope was in steel. David says, saddle up. We're going to recover our wives, our children. God said we will recover everything. And the, these men remember back the teenage boy that slew the impossible warrior, Goliath, and brought him down with a stone and cut his head off. And all of a sudden, their wheels are turning. They're thinking, oh, what have we to do? Where would we go? We've seen God work in this man before, and we see something on his face that we did not see before. Why? Because now he had cried to the Lord and not just cried over his distress. So what did the men do? And David went, he and the 600 men, every one of them, were with him and came to the brook Bristol where those who were left behind stayed. You see, some were just too, too absolutely uh, weakened to continue on. But David pursued, he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread. And he did eat, and they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread or drunk any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to the Amalekite. And my master left me because three days ago I felt sick. We made an invasion upon the south of Cherethites and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah. And upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said unto him, Isn't it amazing how God sends somebody to you to let you know exactly the information you need to know at the right time? And David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hand of my master. And I will bring you down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking. Don't you know that's the enemy's downfall? He gets one victory and then he throws a party. Yeah. He forgets to watch his back. Amen? Hallelujah. They were eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. I want to stop right here and say this. The enemy may be throwing a party right now in hell, rejoicing over all the havoc he's caught on the earth, but he has no idea the troop of God that is about to, to come over the hillside and come down on him. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. They had taken out of the, the land of the Philistines and came out of the land of Judah. Verse 17. And David smote them from the twilight even to the evening of the next day. He whooped on them, up on them for 24 hours. Amen. And there escaped not a man of them. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't know how many of these guys were there, but they had to be a massive army to go in and capture 600 families, not kill any of them, that's a miracle in itself, 
and take them captive and burn them. I'll tell you, that would be a massive amount of men like the, the sand of the sea covering the desert. Amen? But David smote them for, for, for all day long. So to the next day, there escaped not a man from them, save 400 young men which rode upon camels and, and fled. 400 was a small amount. David only came with 400. God can take a little bit and do a lot. Would somebody say amen? amen? I like verse 18 and 19. And David recovered all. Yeah. And the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great. Neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Hallelujah. I don't care what you have lost. If you will learn to take the cry of that loss and turn it to the Lord, you will recover all. Thank you, Lord. David didn't just recover what was lost. If you read on the rest of that chapter, David had, had got enough goods and spoil from what the Amalekites had, had stolen that he sent blessings to a minimum of 13 other nations. And they came back with all their families to the other 200 men that was on the other side of the brook. And the men said, David, we, you know, we, we should uh, give them their families, but we shouldn't share the, 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 uh, the, the spoil with them. And David said, no, I decree it as a as a decree, they have fought with us, and this time they could not go on. They will receive their portion just as we have. He said, and the Bible says that became a statute from that moment on. David was a man of honor. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And just a few verses ago, nobody was his friend, and he had lost everything he had. He was crying. Amen. I turned and was crying. He took that middle three-letter word and he changed the direction. And I don't know if you're reading the story like I am, but let me tell you, there was some joy in the camp when they got back. Hallelujah. They had more in the end than they did in the beginning. Why? Because David, one man, knew what to do with the cry of his heart. And I don't know what cry has been put in your heart from this year. You may have gone through things that you thought, and we all have. We've gone through things we never thought we'd have to go through. Amen. It may have put a cry in your heart in some ways for situations. But I want to tell you that whatever that cry is, turn it to the Lord. And he will turn it into joy for you. Would somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, this story ended in joy. You say, what is joy really? I said, God, give me, give me a, uh, I just meditate my spirit. Look definitions up, but I meditate in my spirit. I said, Lord, give me a real definition of your joy. Now, the, let me just tell you this first. There is no way with earthly words that you can define the spirit of joy, the joy of the Lord. Why? Because the Bible tells us that it is joy unspeakable. <laughs> and full of, I can't be my best way to describe it. I'll never be able to describe real joy to you, but I'm going to take a shot at it. Amen? This is what I wrote down. Joy is an overwhelming of the heart and spirit based on eternal things, not temporal things. That's why you can be facing the greatest threat of the enemy right in your face. Somehow, you still got joy and peace because it's not based on your circumstances and what you're going through right now. It's based on your knowing that my God is eternal. He has my life in his hands. Somehow, some way, he's going to work this out for me. Amen. That's real joy. That's the joy of the Lord. Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. How do we acquire it? When the cry shows up, turn your cry to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18 says it like this. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, God just, just used it as a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, 
but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. David knew the value of directing his cry to the Lord. Would somebody say amen? amen. David knew the value, and he says it throughout the song. I want you to take a quick real little tour through Psalm with me right quick. Real quickly, and, and I don't think I wrote these scriptures down for you way, but, but let me just read some. If you can't follow, because I'm going to go real quickly here. Psalm 22 and 6 says, They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and, and were not confounded. Psalm 30 and verse 2 says this, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Psalm 30 and 8 says, I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. Psalm 66 and 17 says this, I cried unto him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. Hallelujah. Psalms 88, 1 and 2 says this. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. And with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the, in the very heavens. I'm sorry, that was, that was Psalm 89, 1 and 2. But let me read 88, 1 and 2. It says, O God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. And lastly, Psalm uh, 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 not lastly, but Psalm 119, 119, 145. Guys, I'm getting a little stuffy up here. Can y'all be sure we got some airflow somewhere? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 145 through 148 says, I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, save me. I shall keep thy testimony. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. I hoped in thy word. My eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. How many of y'all know that's crying out to the Lord when you make the, 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 uh, the, the, the center of your cry the word of God? Hallelujah. 120, Psalm 120 and 1 says this. It says, I end my distress. I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. And lastly, Psalm 130 and 1 says this. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Let me tell you something this morning. Whenever we direct our cry, wherever we direct our cry, whether we live and will determine whether we live in the results of sin or the blessings of the joy of the Lord, cry unto the Lord. Because he will give ears to a heartfelt cry of his people. Do y'all remember when God was describing to Moses why he was going to send Moses to Egypt? He said, because I've heard the cry of the people. Their cry has come up before me. There's something different about a cry because it's from the depths of the, the, of the innermost being of the heart. We pray heartfelt prayers to the Lord and we cry out for those things that we know God has released for us. Direct your cry to the Lord. Amen. Lastly, I want to go to Psalm 107 this morning. A great psalm that addresses so many things in our life. Because I want to tell you what God desires is that no matter what is coming in our life to try to distress us and bring us down, and cause us to have a weep or a cry inside. He wants to bring us to a place where the cry becomes a thanksgiving. Amen. Psalm 107, listen, listen to this. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Y'all kind of know that one around here. Would somebody say amen? amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. How many of y'all are glad you're redeemed? Yeah. Hallelujah. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and the north and the south. Listen. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary place. They found no city to dwell in. You know why some people are lost and full of a cry of despair in their heart? Because they're wandering. 
God hasn't called you to wonder. God has called you to follow. Amen? Amen? There should be a place where we're wandering around. They wasted 40 years in the wilderness, wandering in the wilderness, when they could have been led by God. God wants to, what did Jesus say to his disciples? Come and wander with me. Come and follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Aren't you glad that God doesn't leave us alone and says, well, here's a map. Good luck. Hope you find me. He said, no. Here's a map. But I'm going to send a, a guide to you. Thank you Lord. I'm going to send a guide of the Holy Spirit. And he will track you in the places that Jesus, my son, has already paid for you. Amen. And he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Aren't you thankful for, for the workings of the Holy Ghost in you? That, that, that moving in you, that leading, that, that, that thing that causes you to stop sometimes when you don't understand why you're stopping? The things that cause you to go forward, the things that cause you to, to, to play it safe sometimes or go forward and be bold. That is Jesus Himself in you by His Holy Spirit directing you. Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that leadership? And He said, I've sent you a helper so that you can follow Him. He will lead you. He said, He will lead you. In other words, He's up in front of us, leading us. Follow Him. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Glory to God. Are y'all hearing this this morning? Yeah. Anybody giving anything out of this this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Read on with me. They wandered in the wilderness, a solitary place. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. In other words, they were crying. Amen. Then they what? Cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to the city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works of the children of men. It says that, that right there over and over and over in this psalm. It's saying something to us. Oh, well, why don't we use our cry to give thanks to God and praise Him for His wonderful works? What would happen? It's saying, oh, that men, if they just do it, what would happen? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works of the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul, verse 9. He filled the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God. Oh, say, okay, well, God's getting ready to deal out some punishment here because he's talking about those in rebellion, not obeying the word of God, right? Oh, but read on with me. Because they rebelled against the Lord of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High, therefore he brought down their heart with labor and fell down and there was none to help. You know, there's some prices to be paid for disobedience. Amen? But then they cried to the Lord. Even if you're in disobedience, if you recognize what's going on and cry to the Lord, look, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. Glory to God. He brought them out of darkness and of the shadow of death and break their bands asunder. And here we go again. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of men. For he had broken the gates of brass, cut in the bars of iron asunder. Fools. Fools. I mean, I know that's about the biggest put down that the Bible offers. Jesus didn't tell people, don't you call a man a fool, you're danger to hellfire. Amen. Amen. But the Bible tells us, even fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. How many of y'all knows the only qualifying factor in reaching the throne of God is to cry to him with a true and pure heart? And say, God, even if I mess up, God, I need you. I need you, oh God. He sends his word and heal them. He sends his word and heal them. Amen. What heals you? He sent his word and heal them. One of the greatest things you can do if you're sick in your body, feed yourself the word of God. Feed yourself the word of God. Feed binge on the word of God. For he sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. 
Here we go again. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and the wonders in the deep. For he commanded and raised up the storm wind, which lifted up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. Does your life feel like you're, you're on a boat in, in a storm and it's just tossing you and you have no control over which way to go? I got a solution for you. I got a remedy by the word of God. You know what the Bible says? Cry unto the Lord in your distress and he'll save you out of all your trouble. Verse 29, he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves are over still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. Like Pastor Donna says this morning, get in peace good. <laughs> so he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them, let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Folks, when we come in here, we come in here not only to cry to God about our needs, but we should come in here to voice a resounding praise of thanksgiving and praise to God, crying to the Lord with a voice of thanksgiving, no matter what's going on in our life. Amen. Turn the page to the last few verses. Hallelujah. Verse 42 and 43, it says, The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Glory. Have you all about ready to have the devil's mouth shut? Shut your mouth, Satan, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard a friend of ours preaching on podcast this week, uh, uh, Roland Ray. Rojas, uh, he's the uh, 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 he's assist, uh, associate with uh, Rusty uh, Martin in Galveston, and I was listening to him teaching, and he said, he said, I devil such a punk. He said, I, I got this is what I call him. He said, you you call him whatever you want to. He said, I just call him when he shows up. I call him Lucy, short for Lucy. I said, punk Lucy, just get out of here. You have no place here. Amen. Amen. Shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Shut your mouth. Here's what you need to hear. All the devil can do is talk noise, and hopefully you will give him a place to operate because ultimately what he wants to do is get in your heart, in your mind, in your mind. Because if you start speaking it, you are created to be a speaking spirit like God. You begin to speak it forth. You begin to believe it. It begins to come to pass. Right. Give no place to him. I think we said that before today. But I'm ready when we cry to the Lord with a pure heart, trust Him. I'm telling you, God will shut the mouth of the devil. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm tired of hearing His big fat mouth. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Everybody just say, shut up, Satan. Shut up. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. And you've got to, because we cry to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whoso is wise, here we go, and will observe these things. Even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Let me ask you something. Is there any place you'd rather be than in the loving kindness of God? No place that I can imagine. Yeah. And it says for those that understand this, what we talked about this morning, those that understand this will turn their cry to the Lord. We'll walk in the loving kindness of the Lord. Why? When we do all this, does it happen? Because this is what happens when you drop down to the next chapter of 108 and read verse 1. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Hallelujah. What does it do? It fixes our heart. 
It fixes our heart. So this is what I have to exhort you in this morning. Let's end the sheer of distress. Turning our cry of distress into a cry of thanksgiving and praise. Amen. God is still on the throne. Yeah. He is still in charge of the lives of those who have entrusted their life to him. Yeah. Nothing will happen unless God in his mighty orchestration of things lets it be done. Yeah. There's a limit. You say, did God cause that? No, men cause that. Yeah. Amen. God, we're not going to blame God for things, but I want to tell you, God draws a line and a limit to everything that's done. Amen? And God will keep us. He is the God that heals us. He is the God that saves us. He is the God that continually brings us out. He's the God that has you sitting in church today when you've had all kinds of junk in your life to say you should not be here. You should already be dead. Amen. Satan had a contract out on almost every one of you in your lives. He wanted you dead. Because why? He did not want you arriving at the place of joy. Amen. Amen. Joy. J-O-I. Jesus on you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants you full of joy. Joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Bless his holy name. Amen. It's a time to rejoice. He has been given control of my life. And I'm not subject to the results of sin. Thank you, Lord. I have been redeemed. And I will say so. Amen. 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 Everybody that's redeemed, say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Let me end with this as you're standing right now. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Psalm 28. In Psalm 28, the NLT, it says this. You don't have to go their way. It can be the same anyway. It says, I cry to you, O Lord, my rock. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. Listen to this. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is worthy to be thanked and praised for somebody say. So let's, as we're standing together, let's burst out in thanksgiving this last, uh, this, uh, going to the, this last Sunday of 2020. We're here because we are born for such a time as this. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to lift up a praise and glory to the house of God.
Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Anybody need special prayer? Don't hesitate to come. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God's good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience. You minister here for once. And thank you for taking the time to just turn and cry to the Lord. How I many of y'all know God's got us a place to be alive in? And it is the joy of the Lord. Would you stand and pray with me for Alicia this morning? Man, I'm telling you, y'all getting out early these days. Okay. Father, thank you, Lord, for your blessings today. I trust, Lord, I've been faithful to share what you put on my heart to share. And I pray and I trust and believe, God, your word is going to make a difference because, Lord, Jesus, you told us your word it is spirit and it is life. So, Lord, let it breathe life to us. I thank you that, Lord, I believe by faith you walk out of these doors different than when we came in. We're uplifted, we're exhorted, we're encouraged in the Lord. We know whom we believe in. And no matter what the cry of the enemy is, we will dispel out in our mind, we will cry unto you. You are the joy, you are the help of our life, you are the God of all creation, and we will continue to trust you. Thank you, Lord. You will turn our morning into dancing, and you will bring us into the joy of the Lord. We just give you glory for it. We give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Say this with me as you leave. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am empowered by the word. I am anointed by the Holy Ghost. And I am covered in the blood. God bless you. Go with the Lord. Have a good week. Come back Wednesday. Let's pray together. 6.30 on Wednesday. God bless you.